Good morning, everyone. This is Nicole Lalia from Karis Realty. And today I've got a really good guest, I, I'm thinking, <laughs> uh, because I think the information that Thomas has to share will be really valuable to all of you. So welcome to Thomas Nietzsche. Thomas is the financial educator at a company called moneymanagement.org. So Thomas, welcome. Tell us a little bit about yourself and your role. Yeah, thank you very much. Yes, um, I am the director of media and brand at Money Management International. I'm also a former counselor here. Um, and many people will recognize MMI by our former name, which was Consumer Credit Counseling Services. Um, we're a national nonprofit um, credit and housing counseling agency, and we are currently based in Houston, Texas. Um, I came to the organization during the Great Recession um, as a counselor working directly with consumers throughout that time in our history. And prior to that, I was actually a prior um, client of what was then called ClearPoint, another uh, division of MMI. Um, so I, I have been with the organization quite a while now, and I currently am, am in the marketing department where I um, help launch a lot of the programs that we offer here at MMI, um, as well as do a lot of media relations and reputation and, and um, handle client concerns or questions and that sort of thing. So, so tell me a little bit more about what MMI actually does and what the different areas of it are. Sure. So MMI is a nonprofit credit and housing counseling organization. Um, our mission is improving lives through financial education. So the core of what we do with all of our clients is to help them um, gain an understanding of where they are today and help them create a plan for where they want to be in the future. So with all of our clients, we are working with them to improve their financial lives. Um, the first step is usually creating a household budget and understanding what their challenges are and what their goals are for the future and creating a plan to help them get to where they want to be. And in many cases, it's related to their housing situation, either wanting to buy a house or maintain their home ownership if they're struggling during times like now. Um, and then of course, we also have a significant um, debt management service where we help people get out of credit card debt. So just to be sure and clear to people, this is not about giving you financial stock advice. This is really about managing your own money and, and Correct. to plan for and account for where you are now and, and heading into the future. Exactly. I know people are often confused by our name because we are not quote unquote money managers, uh, right. as in the as in the, the trademarked. Uh, <laughs> but we are primarily housing and credit counselors to help people understand where they are and get them to where they want to be. Now, tell me, if I come along to MMIR, do I have to pay for your services? No, the services that we offer the community are completely free. Um, we do have some programs that we may refer people to that do have nominal fees, but the actual, the initial assessment and the actual counseling is provided at no charge. So some examples of that would be people who are looking into a reverse mortgage, for example. We do have a fee for reverse mortgage counseling, but often that's paid out of the proceeds of the reverse mortgage. Um, another example would be our debt management plan. There are some nominal monthly fees that go into that. The average is about $25 a month, but we obviously wouldn't be recommending that unless the person was saving at least that much you know, in reduced interest rates. So now, there why are would some... they be paying for the debt management? What, what, what is that fee going towards? Right, that goes to ma the managing the debt management plan to pay for servicing of that plan. So essentially what happens is during the credit counseling session, we determine what type of debt the person is dealing with. And if they're dealing with unsecured debt and they're challenged by that to the point where they feel they can't keep up on even the, mo the minimum monthly payments or they're not making any progress on the principal, we might recommend a debt management plan because the debt management plan reduces interest rates on credit cards down to about seven and a half percent. And it allows people to make headway on that principal. It's not a settlement. It's not a loan. We simply work with the existing creditors to get the interest rates reduced. It's very similar to what credit card companies offer consumers directly through a hardship plan. Um, you might be familiar with, with people, if they have a, you know, a financial hardship, they can contact their creditors directly and request a hardship plan that lowers the interest rate and often the payment. It's very similar to that, except that the consumers are able to combine all the payments into one that we then disperse to all the creditors. So what we see is that a lot of our clients in the debt management plan have some, usually around seven credit cards. Um, and so managing all those payments and balancing those and keeping up on those due dates that are different throughout the month can be challenging when you have that many accounts. So 
we what we do is we set them up in a debt management plan that reduces the overall interest rates to and it fixes that rate until the debt's paid off assuming the consumer keeps up on the payment um, and it allows them to just make one monthly payment that's then dispersed to all the creditors so it's a it's a it, it's a way that they can manage that debt in a way that that helps them get out of debt within an average of about four years so it's, in a way it's also it's a convenience fee for them because everything is then being managed and negotiated by yourselves right? exactly so right. instead of making seven different phone calls and setting up seven different ach withdrawals or, or making you know making those payments each month or writing a check whatever it might be um, logging into the websites you were able to do that just one payment that then gets dispersed every month to all the creditors super so now do you work alone as an organization or do you have partners that you tend to work work with depending on what kind of debt there is yes we have a lot of different partnerships actually so one that i'm really excited about right now because it's it's just so relevant with everything going on in the world is project porchlight um, and project porchlight is a post disaster financial recovery coaching program and what we do is we assist people who've been impacted by natural disasters throughout the united states um, in, including COVID-19, actually, um, and we help them uh, determine, you know, what they need, determine what their needs are, first of all, provide any referrals that they might need to community resources, and then help them navigate the process of FEMA application and insurance um, claims, as well as any sort of, um, not disputes, but, uh, uh, you know, if they have to go back and forth with, with the insurance company, we can help them navigate that process. Um, so that's that's one that we actually just launched within the past year, year and a half or so. Um, and that one is funded by a, a, a international foundation, MetLife Foundation. Right. So yes, we have a lot of partnerships depending on what the program is. Um, we have a lot of relationships with both you know banks and foundations and, and actually HUD as well. We're a recipient of HUD grant funding as well to provide foreclosure prevention counseling um, and pre-purchase counseling. So that's really awesome. I really want to highlight that again because I mean, that, that's touching on anyone who is just affected by, you know, the hurricane in Louisiana and Texas. Uh, it's also affecting anyone who's currently affected by foreclosure and or the end of the forbearance programs um, under COVID, right? So that's right, exactly. absolutely huge. Yeah, we're working with people in um, the Nashville tornado, you may remember from earlier this year. Yeah. Um, there was a significant one in South Carolina that was one of the worst they'd ever oh, had yes. there. Um, there was uh, in uh, Mississippi, um, in the California um, uh, wildfires, um, particularly Paradise, uh, that community. So we're working with with consumers, you know, all over Texas, Florida, um, even going back to older disasters. We're still working with people who were impacted by Hurricane Harvey, you know, and that's Gosh. been like three years ago now. Right. So. Um, and, and what it is, is it's more of a case management service. So we're actually not just doing that initial assessment, making those initial recommendations, but it's also, there's a monthly checkpoint for up to a year where we check in with the consumer. They're not, there's no fee for it and it's not required that they engage with us that long, but it's available for them up to a year so that we're able to keep them, you know, keep that momentum going um, and working towards those goals and, and overcoming those barriers that they may face in that recovery. Um, and the reason this means so much to us as well is because we were actually flooded out during Hurricane Harvey. Our headquarters were displaced during Harvey and obviously a lot of our employees were impacted. Um, and one of our employees in particular, um, their family was impacted by the tornado in Joplin, Missouri years ago. Um, and she just saw how long it took people to recover from something like that. And as a result, we started exploring that area um, and it's the, you know, it's the first counseling and coaching program of its kind. Um, so we're really excited about it and we're so grateful for the funding from MetLife Foundation and, and we're excited to do more work. And um, the, the longer it goes, the, 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 you know, the better we get at it. It was really cool to see that last week we were able to, to virtually deploy that program within 24 hours. Um, and we've brilliant. already had, we've already had more than 40 clients come to us from Louisiana and, um, Eastern Texas from uh, Hurricane Laura. So just to reemphasize, the project is called, it's Project Porchlight. It's if Project Porchlight. If somebody wants to get hold of you or who, who would be the right person, what would be the right number for them to call? Right, so the easiest way is porchlight.org and it just redirects to the disaster recovery page on moneymanagement.org and you can get all the information there. So porchlight.org would be the place to go if, if, you, if you or someone you know has been impacted by a natural disaster, feel free to visit that site. 
um, and you can either sign them up to receive the counseling or direct, direct them to porchlight.org and they can sign up. Super. And when I, when I post this video, I will put that link uh, to that because I think that's a phenomenal resource. So tell me, how have you seen COVID-19 kind of changing the, the nature of the requests that are coming into you and the, and the clientele that's coming into you? Yeah, I'm seeing, because I counseled people through the Great Recession, I'm seeing a lot of parallels um, to the Great Recession. Um, we're, you know, we're hearing from a lot of people who have, you know, good money habits and wouldn't normally need our help. Um, but the economy and the job market in their area has just been so difficult that they've run out of savings or they're just running out of options. Or maybe they were running a little bit too um, lean in their budget or, you know, running a little too close to breaking even in their budget. And it's not taking much to kind of put them into the red. Um, right. We're also seeing a lot more renters since there are fewer renter protections nationwide versus, um, you know, with homes, obviously you've got uh, significant um, significant assistance as far as forbearance and modification and, and things to keep you in the home, whereas um, generally speaking, there's fewer protections for renters. So we're definitely seeing a lot more renters. And then we're also seeing a lot less people coming to us for traditional credit and debt management counseling right now, because I think people are leaning on those credit cards as an extension of their income right now to help them get through this time, um, which of course means down the road a few months, you know, when things start to turn around, I expect we'll see an increase then in, in that type of counseling, people who've racked up those cards to get through this difficult time. Um, I saw one stat that showed something like 33% of, of renters were putting rent on their credit cards right now. And that's just wow. obviously not sustainable. So right. um, it, it's definitely so how, changed. If I'm a renter, how are you going to help me? It's difficult. It's really difficult. Uh, you know, obviously the first thing we're going to do like we do with all our clients is to help them understand where they are at with their budget. Most of the clients who come to us have never really done a, a real household budget before. Um, we're also going to make sure that they're leveraging any resources that might help them reduce their expenses, whether that's utility assistance or if there's any grants available, rent, you know, rental grants in their area. Um, just look for different ways to help them reduce their expenses and make sure that they're, we've also seen some people who assume that they're not eligible for unemployment when they actually are, um, because the criteria has been different for the, the state, um, the, the state unemployment versus the federal unemployment. Those criteria are actually different. They don't align totally. So some people assume that if they were not eligible for the state, that they're also not eligible for the federal, which is not necessarily true. So we're helping them understand those sorts of uh, nuances. Um, and then, you know, basically just helping them try to create a plan, um, you know, and also coming up with worst case scenarios if they end up needing to move or whatever the case may be, that they're exploring all those options and thinking ahead um, and trying to just be a listening ear. A lot of times, a lot of our clients, they just need to talk. Um, some clients feel a lot of, um, I don't know if shame is the right word, but they feel just a lot of confusion and they, they don't necessarily feel like they can talk to other people in their lives about their situation. So the council really provides a, an objective and, and um, you know, a safe uh, space for them to a safe, talk about exactly. their concerns. Right. Exactly. And now, you know, many people have had to take part, let's talk on the other side of this, the home ownership side of things. Um, taking part in mortgage for forbearance programs. What does this mean for them and their credit? And, you know, kind of a lot of these programs had time limits, right? Which I think are coming to the end of their, their mark. Right. So, yeah, depending on the servicer, they might do it for just a period of time and then do a reassessment. Um, in general, though, for, uh, the forbearances are typically for up to a year. They might do a reassessment during that year to see where you're standing and check in with you. But, um, the forbearance is a is a complicated thing because there's a lot of misunderstanding about it. Um, you know, consumers in general, a lot of times when they hear forbearance or when they first learn about it, they feel like it's just a forgiveness that the payments just disappear, and we know that's not yeah, true, they don't. right? Yes. <laughs> Those payments do not just They're go there. away. No, nobody's getting yes. anything out for free there. Yeah. Not not yet. No. <laughs> so. So it's really an education to, to help them understand what that happens. Also, under making sure that people don't. Um, the, making sure that people take it when they really need it and don't when they don't yet need it, right? Um, so there were a lot of people inquiring about it when it was first announced or what have you. They were worried about their job. Maybe they hadn't been personally impacted yet, um, but making sure that those people are making the, the right choice and applying for it when they should and, and not when they're not. Right. Um, so you know, and then your credit score, right? Well, it shouldn't, it shouldn't mean anything for their credit because the mortgage companies are supposed to suppress the negative reporting during this time. That said, we all know how 
you know, these systems go. So consumers should definitely check their credit report to make sure that that's happening and check for any mistakes or irregularities that they might need to um, dispute with the credit bureaus or, or correct with the lender themselves. Okay, awesome. Yeah. And um, are, are you beginning to see that companies are opening up more foreclosure and short sale processes? Because I noticed that certainly in, in my market, uh, about six months ago, it was rare that you would see a foreclosure or a short sale. Uh, mm -hmm. But now I'm noticing they're taking over. So I'm imagining that you're starting to get those calls. You know, it probably varies by market, but um, in general, we're seeing rental, we're starting to see rental evictions, but what, what we've seen nationally, very few actual foreclosures, um, since most cons most homeowners are gonna be covered by a, um, uh, a national or local moratorium or, or the forbearance. So, um, you know, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac and HUD all have foreclosure uh, moratoriums till the end of 2020. Um, and there's a lot of local morator uh, moratoriums as well. Um, so we've not been seeing a lot of new foreclosure activity yet, um, but that doesn't necessarily mean there might not be particular markets where there, there may be more, or there could be other, um, you know, other factors in the local market that are impacting that. Um, but if someone was struggling before, they're certainly having a harder time bouncing back than they would have um, previously. And we're certainly seeing plenty of people who need the forbearance because they haven't been able to work to return to work yet. Okay. So are there any kind of key tips that you would give to people who are in that situation where, you know, you've seen them making errors in a certain way, what are those kind of errors and what are the things that you would really advise that they go ahead and do? Yeah, I think the first thing is just to, to breathe. Um, first of all, you know, I've, I've been in this situation personally before, you know, in 2007, I was laid off um, from a, a global financial services company and I had just bought, or 2008, and I just bought my house in 2007. Um, so it's really scary. So I get it. Um, but the first thing is to just to just breathe, um, you know, try not to panic. Um, something that I did personally that I really regret was um, tapping a 401k. Um, you know, there are ways that you can do that right now that minimize the penalty. But in general, we really recommend that people try to preserve um, those retirement funds if at all possible. And that's something that if I could go back in time that I would definitely have changed about my response to what happened to me. Um, so definitely taking a breath and then getting connected with a counselor who can help you, you know, you can borrow the skills of that counselor um, to, because it's likely that you're someone who's not gone through this personally before. Um, and the counselor either has personally or they've worked with hundreds of people who have personally. So it's really helpful to borrow on the skills of that counselor to help you understand what all the nuances are to your particular situation. Um, and make sure that you're unlocking any of the um, benefits that you might be eligible for that you may not be aware of or any community resources that you might not be aware of. Um, you know, so that I think those are two really key takeaways is to you know, get connected with an expert and, and not panic or make any um, decisions right out of the gate um, that you don't have to make um, just out, so just out how, of panic. How do, how do we get hold of you? What is the telephone number? What is a website? Sure. So uh, like you mentioned earlier, moneymanagement.org is our primary site. And then from there, you can navigate to what particular type of challenge you're experiencing, and that'll funnel you into the right type of counseling. Awesome. So the, the, the flip side of all of this is that there are also a lot of people getting into the housing market right now for the first time. And I would imagine that some of these people are also needing some counseling because it's all very exciting, you know, becoming a homeowner. And, you know, l luckily Maryland has a, a great first time home buyer program to try and encourage people, even have one where, you know, they look at helping with uh, existing student debt and how it can be paid off as part of the mortgage, etc. But I'm sure that there are a lot of people who have no idea how to go about budgeting for all of this. Right. I think something that we've seen and I've seen personally as well is that when people start looking at a house, they just look at the, the cost of the mortgage. They might roll in the taxes and insurance, um, but they look and at the, the, the mortgage plus and <laughs> yeah. the HOA and the, and the taxes and insurance. Um, but then they really don't consider all of the other ancillary costs that go into home ownership that you just can't, you, you can't predict all of them, but you should definitely budget for something, right? Um, you know, I bought a house that was built in 1936. So there are things that happen, you know, that I just had no idea would ever be a, a you know a concern or something that I would need to be paying attention to within the first few years of home ownership. Um, so definitely, there's a lot to consider when buying a home. 
um, and we definitely help people understand um, both the paperwork, the different kinds of mortgages available, and help them plan for their new household budget, including those expenses that they'll have as a homeowner, but probably didn't have as a renter. Um, so before you buy, it's important to know what it's what the true cost is going to be, um, and that you set set something aside for those things and and build savings into your budget as something that you know equally as important as making the mortgage payment. Um, so and like you mentioned, like it would be worthwhile they're getting hold of you before they go into it, even, you know, because, I mean, we, we as, as realtors, what, what we encourage is, you know, the first step is not looking at houses online, deciding what you can afford. It's, it's actually speaking to a mortgage lender. But what I'm hearing is that sometimes it's actually even better to speak to yourselves first, then speak to the mortgage lender. Right. Or a counselor too, because what we see too, is a lot of, um, a lot of people wait until the 11th hour to, um, really prepare themselves financially or their credit for the purchase. And they come to a sort of desperate, you know, they want to buy this house this month, but they've got these things on their credit that they really need to address. Um, and it, it, you know, it takes more time than that. So if you're, if you think you might be considering buying a house a year from now, now is really the time to start to build those um, healthy financial habits and do that due diligence on the credit report. Um, you know, start setting money aside, familiarize yourself. You mentioned programs earlier that are available for first time homeowners. I think that's that's something to really, you know, get in plugged into to see what's available. Something that I use personally was a um, individual development account where it's like a match savings program. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's really great because it incentivizes you to save, um, which, you know, hopefully helps build a good habit in the process. And also, you know, it's a match savings program. I can't remember, I think it was two to one. Um, that they put towards yeah. towards that account. So, and that varies depending on what you know what area you're in. That's not something that's available nationally necessarily, mm -hmm. but there are programs like that in, in certain markets. So it's good to reach out to um, a, you know a counselor in the area, or even um, dial two one one and ask two one one if they have any um, programs like that that they can refer you to um, that they may be aware of. So since it's most of those program. nonprofit. Yeah. like a, an individual development account that, that, and you can use those for several purposes, it can be for a home repair, a home purchase, starting a business. There's usually approved uses for that savings account, um, but it, you know, it often includes buying a home. Oh, that's awesome. Well, Thomas, this has been really useful. Thank you so much. And, you know, for everyone, uh, this is Thomas Nietzsche that I've been speaking at to of Money Management uh, org or MMI, Money Management International. Um, yep. highly recommend that, you know, if you are having any issues with your credit or you're thinking of buying a home or you are in a home and you're either a renter or you are somebody who has been hit by COVID, it is well worth your while giving a call. A lot of their services are free. Um, I think they offer a really great service to the community. And um, I will be putting links to their website as well as to Project Porchlight, which I didn't know about, which I think is phenomenal. Uh, so Thomas, thank you again. I, I really appreciate it. I'd love to speak with you again. And next time, perhaps we can talk about uh, the impact of divorce on credit and what you've seen, because I, I think that's another big area that we don't have time to touch on today, but I'd love to explore. Yeah, that'd be great. There's there's so many things to unpack there as well. And in the love and money. <laughs> love love and money. money, exactly. Well, have a great day. And thanks again, Thomas. Thanks. Have a good one. Bye-bye.